Grüezi YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. Sometimes you want to deploy your ESP8266 in a place where it is not easily accessible anymore. Or you have a few productive ESPs around your house or at other places even in other countries. You want to be able to keep the software of all these ESPs up to date without going there and without opening the boxes the ESPs are built in. Or you want to try a sketch I wrote and you do not want to install all the libraries and so on. You just want to use the software. This led me to the following idea. To build a wireless application store for IoT devices. In this video I will show you a first implementation of such an IoT app store and you will be able to use mine with your own ESP8266 board or you can create your own. Let's get started. In video number 32 I showed you how you can upload your sketch over the air or OTA from your Arduino IDE. Here we want to go one step further. We want that your device is able to update itself without any intervention to the newest software version, just like your mobile or your tablet. The newest ESP extensions of the Arduino IDE offers the possibility to do an OTA software update from a web server. Instead of transferring your sketch from the IDE, your ESP calls a web server to get the file to be flashed. The web server provides this file and the update function in your ESP downloads it via the internet and stores it into a different area in the flash memory. If everything is ok, it replaces the current program with a new one and reboots. This is why your ESP modules need at least two times the flash size of your sketch. With our new 4 MB modules, this is usually no problem. You can easily try this function if you have a web server. I will not cover the setup of such a server in this video. Because not everybody has its own web server, I placed a few files on my web server for your tests. So you can try the mechanism right away. But let's first see how this file is created. I use the normal blink sketch for now. We create our sketch the normal way by replacing the LED pin with pin 2 because the ESP LED is connected to pin 2 and upload it to our ESP via serial. Just as normal. As soon as our sketch is tested and ready for deployment to our wireless ESP through our new web server, you enable the flag Show Verbose Output During Upload in your IDE. Now much more information is displayed during upload. Please search for the directory where the file with the .bin extension is stored. Pay attention, this directory can change if you use a different sketch. If we now go to this folder, we find our bin file. It should have a name like our sketch. This binary file contains our sketch translated or compiled to machine readable code for our ESP. Now you can copy this file to your web server. I used FileZilla to copy exactly this file to my web server. Now you can take your ESP module. Let's assume you use this Lolit board. To start the process you have to upload the sketch HTTP update from the examples to your board. Please replace the credentials and the address of the file to be downloaded. If you want to use mine, use the following file name http iotappstore.org slash blink.bin Make sure you include the HTTP. After uploading to your board, you have to reset the ESP manually. Otherwise, it will not automatically reboot after OTA flashing. Now you even can connect your ESP to a power bank without physical connection to the IDE. 
After a few seconds, your ESP should start to blink. This is the proof that you did your first OTA upload from a web server. Easy. If you want, you can leave your ESP connected to your PC and watch the process by enabling the serial monitor. Let's assume we improve our sketch to make it blink faster. Will it be downloaded automatically? Unfortunately, the normal blink sketch of your ESP has no possibility for a web update and therefore this slow sketch will stay as long as you do not intervene manually and do the same thing with it again. So we have to build a genetically engineered blink sketch, which always after booting downloads the newest file from the server. With this feature, your ESP would update automatically if you would replace the file on the server with this new one. So let's start with this genetic engineering. We combine the two sketches by including the HTTP update part into the setup of our Blink sketch. Like that, our sketch will start with the update process before it goes on with blinking. So we always have the newest version on our ESP. We store this new file also on our web server with the name blink underscore gmo. If you now use your HTTP upload sketch again and replace the file name with a new file, your ESP downloads a new file and, as planned, starts with the OTA. Great! But unfortunately, the newly downloaded file does not work. Your ESP does not connect to your Wi-Fi. Why is this? The reason for this behavior is that I fortunately do not know your Wi-Fi password. This is why I had to use a dummy SSID and password when I created my file and uploaded it to the web server. And this file is now on your ESP. We could overcome this problem if you would provide me your SSD and password. Then I could write a special file for you and you could download it. For both of us, this is not a good solution. For you because you would have to give your password to me and for me because I would have to maintain a special file for each of you. If you work with your own web server, however, this is already a feasible concept. But for our App Store, we have to put this problem as the first entry on the open points list. To go on, I replace the credentials in the file on my web server. Now, my ESP connects to the Wi-Fi and updates the sketch. Cool! But wait, what happens after successful update? The ESP reboots again and starts the flashing over and over. It never reaches the blink part. Why is that happening? Because there is no mechanism to check if the version in the flash memory is the same as on the server, the ESP updates the sketch again and again. Another open point for our list. But at least the basic principle worked. So let's solve first point number two because we have to solve this one even if you use your own web server. Fortunately, the guys who developed the web update functionality provide a solution to that point. We do not download the file directly. At the beginning of the upload, the uploader calls a PHP script on the server which decides if your ESP is up to date or needs a new download. If it needs a new download, it sends the needed file and the ESP flashes it into its memory. If not, it just sends the answer to continue with the sketch. So this should work on your ESP. But how can the PHP script decide if and also which file to send? Maybe you have several ESP modules for different purposes. Then you do not want that after the automatic update, the electronic load behaves like the irrigation controller or vice versa. The PHP script uses a simple mechanism. Every device in the Internet has a distinct so-called MAC address. Not two devices should have the same address. 
Each of your ESPs therefore should have their own MAC address when you purchase them. You can easily display the MAC address with the command wifi.macaddress. The HTTP update call automatically includes this address in its call to the web server and the script knows which MAC address needs which file. So it sends the appropriate file to your ESP. Because the ESP also can send the name and the version of the currently installed file, the PHP script can also decide if it needs an update or not. Let's check. We want that our downloader file downloads the enhanced version of Blink, fast blink underscore zero zero one. Because we need the MAC address, we enhance our initial uploader file with the possibility to print its MAC address. We also replace the file to be downloaded with the name of the PHP script on the web server. And we write the name and version of the currently installed sketch into the HTTP update call. Now we can try to update. Unfortunately, we get the response file not found. Why is that? We forgot to enter the MAC address of our device into the PHP script. If we do that, the PHP script gets the MAC address and the name of the currently installed sketch. A comparison shows that our ESP does not have the newest version, so it has to send the fast blink underscore zero zero one file to our device and really the LED starts now to blink fast. If we reboot the ESP now, the PHP script checks the sketch versions and just signals you are up to date and the ESP continues into blinking. So open point two is solved and we can go on to open point number one to store the Wi-Fi credentials locally on your ESP. This can be done by using the EEPROM functionality. Right after booting, we check a magic byte in the EEPROM and if this byte is set correctly, we assume that also the SSD and password in the EEPROM can be used. If not, and this is the case if you start with a new ESP, the sketch uses the SSD and password you provided by your credentials.h file. After downloading the new file from the IoT App Store, the sketch will use your credentials because the magic byte is set already. So the file in the IoT App Store does not need your credentials anymore. You find this initial update file on my GitHub. So open point number one is also solved. Summarized, we built an infrastructure to update all our diverse ESP modules from an IoT App Store. We use the standard initial update function of the ESP and the PHP script on the web server. The web server can be hosted by yourself or you can use mine. The initial update sketch gets your credentials from the EEPROM of your ESP and calls the PHP script on the web server. If the web service knows the MAC address of your device and your script needs an update, it sends the requested file and your ESP updates. If not, it sends no update necessary and your ESP starts its work. Everything completely without human intervention. You can go one step further and automate the process completely by using the time function shown in video number 71 to schedule a planned version check every day or every week. If you now want to use the IoT App Store.org examples, please put the MAC address of your ESP in the comment and also whether you want that your ESP blinks slow, fast or if you want to get a surprise. For the surprise, you have to connect a loudspeaker between GPIO 5 and ground. After I get this information, I will update my PHP script that it provides the requested file to your ESP. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye!